I went back and forth on various <laughs> things I wanted to do in my life. Um, I was, you know, I was one of the Cosmos kids. I, I just, I loved the Cosmos series, and it was uh, very uh, inspirational. Carl Sagan's a huge hero of mine. I've been with SETI at home since its beginning, which is a little over 15 years now. Um, I actually wrote the, uh, the reference code for the, for the science core uh, of SETI at home. When we first heard the, the idea of SETI at home, we thought, that'll never fly. No one's going to be interested in, in doing this. The original paper was called, uh, I think, something like doing SETI with 10,000 internet connected computers. And I think we surpassed 10,000 within the first few hours of when we went online. We were scrambling. We had to go in and beg, borrow, and steal servers to, to keep the project going in the beginning. Oh, well, I used to be a systems programmer uh, in industry, and I had a friend that worked uh, at Space Sciences Lab in, in SETI, and so I got interested, I'd always had an interest in this sort of thing, but I got interested in actually working uh, in this field um, from my friend, and I, I started volunteering up at Space Sciences Lab at UC Berkeley. I think I volunteered a day, a week or so for about a year and a half. It's like the world's longest interview. So when an opportunity to actually uh, work at Space Sciences Lab came up, then, um, then I went there. I took a 25% cut in pay, but 100% more in fun and interest. So it was a good deal. SETI at Home is a distributed computation project. Uh, we record a great deal of data um, at the observatory, uh, currently Arecibo, although we're going to be expanding to uh, other observatories for collecting data to distribute. It's almost, you can think of it as a sieve. We send a giant amount of, of data out to the distributed uh, computation. We get just a trickle back. And then we have programs that run on our servers back here that uh, look for um, signals that repeat um, at the same spot in the sky at roughly the same frequency. And we collect a lot of data. We have mm, on the order of 200 terabytes of raw data at this point. Far more data than we could analyze with our own computers at the lab. Uh, we do have machines uh, running uh, with the SETI at home data. I mean, well over 99% of the analysis is done by the clients um, out, out spread across the world. And we can achieve far more computation power than we could otherwise. I knew it was, a, it was a long shot. It's one of those sort of all or nothing things. But you know, SETI at home uh, has made this valuable and interesting apart from a possible detection because it gets so many people involved. Uh, and it's such a good educational tool. And that's really neat to see. For a number of years, we were the largest computation on the planet. Yeah. Uh, we have four big databases, you know, comprising billions of rows of, uh, of data. So uh, it's a chore. And that's one of the more challenging things. It has been one of the more challenging things is those of us that are working in there, uh, you know, didn't come from a background of maintaining a large um, server installation. And so we've kind of had to, to scramble and teach ourselves how to keep things running all the time, anticipate problems. Uh, we don't always succeed, but we try.